Welcome to this PCR Valve eCourse 2020 expert discussion on cusp overlap technique. We're going to discuss uh, why to use it and how to use it and also what is the benefit of it. My name is Lars Sandergaard. I'm a cardiologist in Copenhagen, Denmark, and it's my pleasure to be here with Stefan Tuckweiler from Lucerne in Switzerland and Dr. Fraser from Manchester in the UK. So before we start, maybe I should just spend a few minutes to talk about why to use this cusp overlap technique. So we all know that patient who's going for transcatheter aortic valve replacement instead of cervical aortic valve replacement have a higher risk of conduction abnormality. And the reason is that there's a very close proximity between the aortic annulus and the left bundle branch block. So if you go deep with your valve implant, you're going to have a high risk of conduction abnormality and need for new permanent pacemaker. On the other hand, if you can implant higher, you have a much lower rate. And of course, you need to implant high, but also do it safely so you do not risk a uh, pop out of your stent valve. Traditionally, we have used this LAO angulation during the implantation, and we can, on the software, the Tremensio or other software, decide where is the coplanar view where they have all the three cusps aligned with the imaging plane. The problem is, if you choose that plane, often we'll see that we have some parallax in the delivery catheter. The delivery catheter is not aligned with the imaging plane. And we can adjust uh, the C arm to get the, the delivery system aligned with the imaging plane, but then often what's going to happen is that the triotic cusp is not aligned anymore. Nico Piazza years back told us about this double S curve. We have an S curve for the aortic annulus, all the position of the C arm where we have the triotic cusp aligned, but we can also have a C or an S curve on the delivery catheter where we have the delivery system aligned. And ideal, we want to use a position with the C arm where these two S curve is crossing because that's going to give us both the delivery catheter and the aortic annulus aligned with the imaging plane. And that's often in an ario caudal projection. Another benefit from going from LAO to ario caudal is that we're going to elongate the left ventricular output tract. So we have a better understanding how deep or how high are we with our, our implants. And now we're talking about this cusp overlap view where we have the right and the left coronary cusp overlapping each other on the fluoroscopy view. And that's often going to bring us to an ario caudal projection. And you will see that it's often very close to where these two S curve is crossing. And again, as I said before, the benefit of going to ario caudal projection, for example, this cusp overlap view is that you both have your delivery catheter and the triotic cusp aligned with the imaging plane. So you have a better understanding how deep or how high are you with your implant and also you're going to elongate the left ventricular alpha tract, which is also going to give you a better understanding. And thereby you can have a more accurate deployment, go for a higher precision without risk of a pop out of your device. So I think this was why most sites now are changing from an LAO to an REO caudal projection using this cusp overlay technique. And I know you, Stefan, has been using this for quite a while. So maybe you can just illustrate how you do this in clinical practice. Yes, thank you uh, very much, uh, Lars, for the introduction. And uh, in fact, we have uh, only started using this technique uh, now about uh, two months or three months ago, and our experience so far is really uh, very good. So this is an 81-year-old man with severe aortic stenosis and mild coronary artery disease. And you can see here some pictures of the annulus with heavy calcification. And you can also see the dimension of the annulus, uh, which is 28 by 21 millimeters. And in this patient, the traditional three cusp view with the R, with the right coronary cusp in the middle, was REO1 caudal 6. So to reach the cusp overlap, uh, uh, overlap view, we have to go more REO caudal. And this is how it looks like when we go REO 18, caudal 15. As you can see, the pacemaker wire is a little bit dislodged on this image, but it doesn't matter. But what you can see here that we don't have a perfect overlap, but it's very close. 
and already we are isolating the uh, non-coronary cusp on the left side of the screen and we are opening up the LVOT. And this is how we performed the whole procedure. So there was no switching of angulation during the procedure. So pre-dilatation was performed with a 22 millimeter balloon, which is quite careful, but there was a lot of calcification. And then we started deploying the valve. And on the right side, you see the starting position where we actually start to deploy the valve. So we are still very high, a few millimeters above the annular plane. And this is because usually the valve will um, travel a little bit uh, down, dive a little bit in, in the LVOT during the first turns. And this ensures that there is really no contact or minimal contact between the conduction system and delivery, the delivery catheter. And then you can see on the next slide, you can see the next step slowly opening up the valve and it really stays very stable here. And if you pay attention to the marker band that's on the catheter, you can also see that it's a nice line indicating that indeed the projection of the valve and the annulus are overlapping and are the same. And then the last part we like to do with full rapid pacing, the um, last part of the delivery with 180 to ensure stability. And then we fully release the valve and you can see the final result here on fluoroscopy and also on echocardiography. And in this patient, there was absolutely no uh, paravalvular leak and the mean gradient was six millimeters of mercury and there was no uh, need for a pacemaker and not even a new left bundle branch block. So I think it's really nice technique. It allows very stable, also very, um, very uh, focused and very relaxed implantation because you don't have to switch between different views. And I think it will reduce the conduction disorders, but also it may reduce the occurrence of paravalvular leak because with a high implantation, you generally also have a low rate of paravalvular leaks. That was a great illustration, Stefan. So, so let me just ask you, sometimes when you're working in this ario coil projection, you're going to have quite, how should I say, extreme angulation with your C-arm, so it can be difficult for you as an operator to, to do it. What, what kind of compromise are you doing in these cases? Yes, so a, a little bit like what we showed in this case, you don't have to always go to the perfect cusp overlap. So if you just go areocaudal, then it's usually enough to isolate the non-coronary cusp and to open up the LVOT to have no foreshortening and to have this uh, stable position with the overlapping views of the valve and the annulus. So I think there is no need to, to really have extreme angulation because as you as you point out it can sometimes be uncomfortable if the c arm is is going uh, towards you so there is no need to go for like ario 40 caudal 40 or something like that also we discussed early on that if you're working in an lao projection the left ventricular alpha tract is often for shortened yes as if you're working in a cusp overlap view it's elongated so if you do a final angiogram in an LAO projection, you may look like you're pretty high with your valve, but if you turn the, the C-arm to a cusp overlap, you, you, you're sitting lower. So Absolutely. we used to say that we should be about three millimeter below the aortic annulus. Is that still the case if you're working in this cusp overlay? Because you're actually going to be, uh, to be even higher than three millimeter in an LAO projection. Yes, but now we know for sure that we are three millimeters. And before we didn't know. So I think there is, uh, I mean, we can talk about this, should it be one or five millimeters, but probably three millimeters seems to be a good compromise between safety, as you mentioned, pop-outs, and between reduction of conduction disorder. So probably three millimeters should be where we aim. If it's two millimeters or four millimeters, it's still a very good implantation. So that was great, uh, Stefan. So, so Douglas, uh, what evidence do we actually have uh, uh, for the time being that this cusp overlap view is, is actually going to reduce the rate of conduction subnormality and, and the need for new permanent pacemakers? Thanks very much, Lars. Well, uh, as you say, a great case and uh, showing the ease of use of the cusp overlap areocaudal 
uh, technique. Uh, we've been interested in this for a little while in Manchester, uh, and we've done a few studies ourselves, and also there's been some studies presented at TCT very recently. Uh, if I may, just going to the first study that we did, which I think will be of interest, uh, we presented some of this data last year in London Valves. Uh, essentially, when you come off the annular plane, uh, either LAO or cordal, uh, then your device will move up with the right coronary cusp. Uh, basically, because the device comes through in between the right and the non, it's sitting there pretty close to the right coronary cusp. We all know that when you come cordal, the right coronary cusp is going to go up. And it turns out that the device goes up as well. And you can measure that uh, using three mencio, or you can predict how much it would be. So basically, uh, we did a study where we showed that every 10 degrees you come off the annular plane, uh, you end up, uh, the device looks between one and one and a half millimeters higher than it actually is because it's elevated above those two remaining cusps. So I think um, uh, operators will be interested in that. It's a very consistent finding. Uh, every patient, there's, there's elevation when you come uh, LEO or caudal. Getting on to your question, Lars, which was about pacemakers. Uh, well, we looked at our pacemaker rate. We'd been a sapien center for many years. Uh, and when we took on Evolute, uh, we actually found that our pacemaker rate was lower with Evolute valves uh, than it was for um, uh, our Sapien valves uh, historically. So we got a sub 5% sub pacemaker rate using this cusp overlap technique, uh, which is really a lot lower than, uh, than what's been, dis been described in, in big studies. Uh, and uh, that really confirmed to us that there's something in this. There's uh, going on to um, uh, other slides that were presented in TCT. There's now a number of registries with a total of several hundred patients now, all showing the same sort of findings. So between four and 7% pacemaker rates using the cusp overlap technique. And although this is you know, somewhat preliminary data, this is registry studies. Uh, most of these are retrospective. There's one that's prospective. Um, some of these are involving a number of centers and it's involving several hundred patients. And there's this consistent roughly 5% pacemaker rate, which is a considerable improvement uh, on uh, conventional uh, data from you know, well-controlled trials and so on. So I definitely think there's something in this. Basically, um, as you said, the conduction system's very close to the annulus. Um, when you're using images which falsely elevate the valve, you end up pushing in the valve, getting a low implant. It's that low implant that's impacting on the conduction, conduction system. And that's why we think using the cusp overlap technique, you can pin down precisely exactly where you're placing that valve, get a really accurate placement as Stefan showed uh, and uh, reduce your pacemaker rates. And that's what we're seeing in our data. That was great, uh, Doctor. So um, I think the data we have so far actually confirm that this is not only a technical issue, but it's also going to turn into clinical outcome for the patient with a lower rate of conductance abnormality. Yeah. And I think as we move forward to uh, treating patients with longer life expectancy, I think uh, it's, it's crucial that we can actually bring down this uh, rate of conductance abnormality as, to as a low rate as, as possible. So I hope this, um, this discussion um, showed you that uh, using a cusp overlap technique where you actually move your C-arm from the LAO projection, which traditionally has been used, to REO cordal is going to elongate the left ventricular alpha tract, is going to have both the triotic cusp and the liver catheter aligned with the imaging plane, and thereby a much better understanding how deep or how high are you with your implant, and they allow you for a safe high implantation which finally is going to reduce the rate of conductance abnormality and thereby also improve uh, the outcome for the patient. So I think we're going to conclude here. I want to thank you, Stefan and Douglas, uh, for being part of this. And I want to thank Medtronic for organizing this discussion. Mm -hmm.